Education in the Philippines is managed and regulated by the Department of Education or DEPED as it is commonly referred to in the country. The department controls the Philippine education system, especially the curriculum used in schools, and usage of funds used for further improvements, which includes the continual building of schools and its facilities, and the recruitment of teachers and other staff, among others. Prior to the mid-20th century, the country's education system was patterned on those of its earlier colonial powers, those of both Spain and the United States. However, after the Philippine independence in 1946, its educational system changed radically. The former basic educational system of the Philippines was composed of six years of elementary education starting at the age of six, and four years of high school education starting at the age of twelve. Afterwards, one can continue his or her education by enrolling in technical or vocational schools, or in higher education institutions like universities. Although the 1987 Constitution states that elementary education is compulsory, it was never put into force. Since 2011, the country started its transition from its old 10-year basic educational system to the K-12 educational system, as mandated by DEPED. This time, the new 12-year system is now compulsory, along with the adoption of new curricula for all schools. The transition shall last until the SY. 2017-2018, where the first graduates under the new educational system will be brought forth. All public schools in the Philippines must start classes from a date mandated by the Department of Education, and must end after each school completes the mandated 200-day school calendar of DEPED. Private schools are not obliged to abide by the date declared by DEPED, but must open classes no later than the last week of August. History Pre-colonial period. During the pre-colonial period, education was still decentralized. Children were provided with more vocational training but fewer academics. Philippine schools were headed by parents or by their tribal tutors. They employed a unique writing system known as Babayne. Spanish period. When the Spanish first arrived in Manila, they were surprised to find a population with a literacy rate higher than that of Madrid. During the early Spanish period, most education was conducted by religious orders. The friars, recognizing the value of the literate indigenous population, built printing presses to produce material in Baybayin. Missionaries studied the local languages in the Baybayin to communicate better with the local populations and teach Christianity. The church and the school both worked together. All Christian villages had schools for students to attend. Spanish missionaries established schools immediately after reaching the islands. The Augustinians opened a school in Cebu in 1565. The Franciscans, in 1577, immediately took to the task of teaching improving literacy, aside from the teaching of new industrial and agricultural techniques. The Jesuits followed in 1581, also by the Dominicans in 1587, and they started a school in their first mission at Batalan. In 1590, the Anivacitad de San Ignacio was founded in Manila by the Jesuits, and following the suppression of the Jesuits was incorporated into the University of Santo Tomas, College of Medicine and Pharmacy. The first book printed in the Philippines dates back to 1590. It is a Chinese-language version of Doctrina Christiana. A Spanish and Tagalog version, in both Latin script and the locally used Baybayin script was printed in 1593. In 1610, Thomas Pinpin, a Filipino printer, writer and publisher, who is sometimes referred as the Patriarch of Filipino Printing, wrote his famous Librong Pergaralan Nang Manga Tagalog Nang Wakong Castilla, which was meant to help Filipinos learn the Spanish language. The prologue read, in 1640, the Anivacitad de San Felipe de Austria was established in Manila. It was the first public university in the Philippines. On April 28, 1611, the University of Santo Tomas was founded in Manila as the Colegio de Nuestra C plus or minus Ora del Santísimo Rosario. By the end of the 16th century, several religious orders had established charity hospitals all over the archipelago and provided the bulk of this public service. 
These hospitals also became the setting for rudimentary scientific research work on pharmacy and medicine. The Jesuits also founded the Colegio de San Jose in 1601 and took over the management in what became Escola Municipal in 1859. The Dominicans on their part founded the Colegio de San Juan de Letran in 1620 in Manila. The Educational Decree of 1863 created a free public education system in the Philippines, run by the government. It was the first such education system in Asia. The decree mandated the establishment of at least one primary school for boys and one for girls in each town under the responsibility of the municipal government, and the establishment of a normal school for male teachers under the supervision of the Jesuits. Primary education was free and available to every Filipino, regardless of race or social class. Contrary to what the propaganda of the Spanish Euro American War tried to depict, they were not religious schools, but schools established supported and maintained by the Spanish government. In 1866, the total population of the Philippines was 4,411,261. The total number of public schools for boys was 841, and 833 for girls, while the total numbers of children attending those schools were 135,098 for boys, and 95,260 for girls. In 1892, the number of schools had increased to 2,137, of which 1,087 were for boys, and 1,050 for girls. By 1898, enrollment in schools at all levels exceeded 200,000 students. Because of the implementation of public education, a new social class of educated Filipinos arose, the Ilustrados. This new well-educated middle class of Filipinos would later lead the Philippine independence movement, using the Spanish language as their common language. Among the ilustrados who had also studied in Spain were Joseph Copyright Rizal, Graciano La Cube de Pesgena, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Mariano Ponce or Antonio Luna, who were to lead later the cause of Filipino self-government and independence. First Republic the defeat of Spain following the Spanish-American War led to the short-lived independence movement which established the insurgent First Philippine Republic. The schools maintained by Spain for more than three centuries were closed for a short period but were reopened on August 29, 1898 by the Secretary of Interior. The Burgos Institute, the Academia Militar, and the Literary University of the Philippines were established. Article 23 of the Malolos Constitution mandated that public education would be free and obligatory in all schools of the nation under the First Philippine Republic. However, the Philippine Euro American War hindered its progress. American period. An improved public school system was established during the first decade of American rule upon the recommendation of the Sherman Commission. Free primary instruction that trained the people for the duties of citizenship and avocation was enforced by the Taft Commission per instructions of President William McKinley. Chaplains and non-commissioned officers were assigned to teach using English as the medium of instruction. A highly centralized public school system was installed in 1901 by the Philippine Commission by virtue of Act No. 74. The implementation of this act created a heavy shortage of teachers. As a result, Philippine Commission authorized the Secretary of Public Instruction to bring to the Philippines more than 1,000 teachers from the United States called the Thomasites from 1901 to 1902. These teachers were scattered throughout the islands to establish barangay schools. The same law established the Philippine Normal School to train aspiring Filipino teachers. The high school system supported by provincial governments, special educational institutions, School of Arts and Trades, an agricultural school, and commerce and marine institutes were established in 1902 by the Philippine Commission. In 1908, the Philippine Legislature approved Act No. 1870, which created the University of the Philippines. The Reorganization Act of 1916 provided the Filipinization of all department secretaries except the Secretary of Public Instruction. The emergence of high school education in the Philippines Islands, however, did not happen until 1910, caused by the rise in big businesses and technological advances in factories and the emergence of electrification that required skilled workers. In order to meet this new job demand, 
high schools were created and the curriculum focused on practical job skills that would better prepare students for professional white-collar or skilled blue-collar work. This proved to be beneficial for both the employer and the employee, because this improvement in human capital caused employees to become more efficient, which lowered costs for the employer, and skilled employees received a higher wage than employees with just primary educational attainment. Two decades later, enrollment in elementary schools was about 1 million from about 150,000 in 1901, and about 100,000 in high school from less than 20,000 in 1901. Third Republic, in 1947, by the virtue of Executive Order No. 94, the Department of Instruction was changed to the Department of Education. During this period, the regulation and supervision of public and private schools belonged to the Bureau of Public and Private Schools. Fourth Republic, in 1972, the Department of Education became the Department of Education and Culture by the virtue of Proclamation 1081 which was signed by President Ferdinand Marcos. Following a referendum of all barangays in the Philippines from January 10 to Euro 15, 1973, on January 17, 1973, President Marcos ratified the 1973 Constitution by Proclamation 1102. The 1973 Constitution set out the three fundamental aims of education in the Philippines, to foster love of country, teach the duties of citizenship, and develop moral character, self-discipline, and scientific, technological and vocational efficiency. On September 24, 1972, by Presidential Decree No. 1, the Department of Education, Culture and Sports was decentralized with decision-making shared among 13 regional offices. In 1978, by the Presidential Decree No. 1397, the Department of Education and Culture became the Ministry of Education and Culture. The Education Act of 1982 provided for an integrated system of education covering both formal and non-formal education at all levels. Section 29 of the Act sought to upgrade education institutions' standards to achieve quality education, through voluntary accreditation for schools, colleges, and universities. Section 16 and Section 17 upgraded the obligations and qualifications required for teachers and administrators. While Section 41 provided for government financial assistance to private schools, this Act also created the Ministry of Education, Culture and Sports. Fifth Republic, on February 2, 1987, a new constitution for the Philippines was ratified. Section 3, Article 14 of the 1987 Constitution contains the ten fundamental aims of education in the Philippines. It is also seen that under the 1987 Constitution, Article 14, only elementary school is compulsory. In 1987 by virtue of Executive Order No. 117, the Ministry of Education, Culture and Sports, became the Department of Education, Culture and Sports. The structure of DECS as embodied in the order remained practically unchanged until 1994. On May 26, 1988, the Congress of the Philippines enacted the Republic Act 6655, the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988, which mandated free public secondary education commencing in the school year 1988 to Euro 1989. On May 26, 1988, the Congress enacted the act which made free public secondary education to become a reality. On February 3, 1992, the Congress enacted Republic Act 7323, which provided that students aged 15 to 25 may be employed during Christmas and summer vacation with a salary not lower than the minimum wage. 60% of the wage is to be paid by the employer and 40% is by the government. The Congressional Commission on Education Report of 1991 recommended the division of DECS into three parts. On May 18, 1994, the Congress passed Republic Act 7722, the Higher Education Act of 1994, creating the Commission on Higher Education, which assumed the functions of the Bureau of Higher Education, and supervises tertiary degree programs. On August 25, 1994, the Congress passed Republic Act 7796, the Technical Education and Skills Development Act of 1994, 
creating the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, which absorbed the Bureau of Technical Vocational Education plus the National Manpower and Youth Council, and supervises non-degree technical vocational programs. DECS retained responsibility for all elementary and secondary education. This threefold division became known as the Trifocal System of Education in the Philippines. 2000s, in August 2001, Republic Act 9155, otherwise called the Governance of Basic Education Act, was passed transforming the name of the Department of Education, Culture and Sports to the Department of Education and redefining the role of field offices. The Act provides the overall framework for school head empowerment by strengthening their leadership roles and school-based management within the context of transparency and local accountability. The goal of basic education is to provide the school-age population and young adults with skills, knowledge and values to become caring, self-reliant, productive and patriotic citizens. In 2005, the Philippines spent about 138 US dollars per pupil compared to 3728 US dollars in Japan, 1582 US dollars in Singapore and 852 US dollars in Thailand. In January 2009, DEP had signed a memorandum of agreement with the United States Agency for International Development to seal $86 a million assistance to Philippine education, particularly the access to quality education in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, and the western and central Mindanao regions. 2010s and the K-12 program The start of this century's second decade saw a major improvement in the Philippine education system. In 2011, DEP had started to implement the new K-12 educational system, which includes the new curricula for all schools. In this system, education is now compulsory. The implementation of the K-12 program is phased. There are four phases during the implementation of the new system. These are, 1. Phase I, laying the foundations, its goal is to finally implement the universal kindergarten, and the development of the program. 2. Phase 2, Modeling and Migration, its goal is to promote the enactment of the basic education law, to finally start the phased implementation of the new curriculum for grades 1 to 4 and 7 to 10, and for the modeling of the senior high school. 3. Phase 3, Complete Migration, its goal is to finally implement the grades 11 and 12 or the senior high school, and to signal the end of migration to the new educational system. 4. Phase 4, Completion of the Reform, its goal is to complete the implementation of the CAR Euro 12 education system. However, during the new educational cycle, from 2016 to 2018, college enrollment could slow down because of the entrance of the lower year students to the new educational system. Program Description, at Kindergarten, the pupils are mandated to learn the alphabet, numbers, shapes, and colors through games, songs, and dances, but in their mother tongue. Thus after grade 1, every student can read on his her mother tongue. The 12 original mother tongue languages that have been introduced for the SY. 2012-2013 are Bahasa Sug, Baikalano, Cebuano, Charbicano, Hiligaynon, Iloko, Kapampangan, Maguindanaoan, Maranao, Pangasinans, Tagalog, and Array. Seven more mother tongue languages have been introduced for the SY. 2013 to 2014. These are Ibanic, Ivotan, Sambal, Ekanan, Kinaraya, Yakan, and Saraganan. In grade one, the subject areas of English and Filipino are taught, with a focus on oral fluency. In grade four, the subject areas of English and Filipino are gradually introduced, but now, as languages of instruction. Currently in high school, physics is taught in fourth year, but with the effect of the CAR Euro 12 program, these subjects are connected and integrated from grades 7 to 10 with the use of the spiral progression method in teaching. This will also be implemented on mathematics. The high school from the former system will now be called Junior High School while senior high school will be the 11th and 12th year of the new educational system. It will serve as a specialized upper secondary education. With the senior high school, students may choose a specialization based on aptitude, interests, and school capacity. 
the choice of career track will define the content of the subjects a student will take in grades 11 and 12. Senior high school subjects fall under either the core curriculum or specific tracks. Core curriculum learning areas include languages, literature, communication, mathematics, philosophy, natural sciences, and social sciences, whereas there are three choices that are available to be chosen by the students a euro, or the so-called specific tracks. These are academic, technical vocational livelihood, sports and arts. The first track, the academic track, includes three strands which are business, accountancy, and management, humanities, education, and social sciences, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The second track, the technical vocational livelihood, specializes in vocational learning. A student can obtain a national certificate level 2, provided he she passes the competency-based assessment of the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority. This certificate improves employability of graduates in fields like agriculture, electronics, and trade. The third track, the Sports and Arts, is the track that is responsible for educating senior high school students on the fields of sports and arts. Current fourth year students in high school in SY 2014 to 2015 are exempted in this program. Enrollment figures, educational system, table, compulsory education, voluntary education, higher education, adult education, curriculum, further information, elementary school. Elementary school, sometimes called primary school or grade school, is the first part of the educational system and it includes the first six years of compulsory education. These grades are further grouped accordingly into primary level, which includes the first three grades, and intermediate level, which includes the last three grades. Elementary school level education covers a smaller but wider than the junior and senior high school because of the spiral approach educational technique. In public schools, the core major subjects that are introduced starting at grade one include mathematics, Filipino, and Makabayan. English is only introduced after the second semester of grade 1. Science is only introduced starting grade 3. Heographia, Kasaysen, and Sibika, is only introduced starting grade 4. Minor subjects then include music, arts, physical education, and health. In private schools, subjects in public schools also include those of the public schools with the additional subjects including, Computer Education and HELE, stands for Home Economics and Livelihood Education. While in Christian schools or in Catholic schools, Religious Education. International schools also have their own subjects in their own language and culture. From grades 1 to 3, students will be taught using their mother tongue, meaning the regional languages of the Philippines will be used in some subjects as a medium of instruction. It may be incorporated as a separate subject. But from grade 4, Filipino and English as a medium of instruction will then be used. On December 2007, Philippine President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo announced that Spanish is to make a return as a mandatory subject in all Filipino schools starting in 2008 but it didn't come into effect. DECS bilingual policy is for the medium of instruction to be Filipino for Filipino. Arailing Pamla Punan, Education Pankatorn, Kalizugan at Musica. And English for English, Science and Technology, Home Economics and Livelihood Education. Article 14, Section 7 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution mandates that regional languages are the auxiliary official languages in the regions and shall serve as auxiliary media of instruction therein. As a result, the language actually used in teaching is often a polyglot of Filipino and English with the regional language as the foundation, or rarely the local language. Filipino is based on Tagalog, so in Tagalog areas, Filipino is the foundational language used. Philippine regional languages are used in the provinces in the teaching of Makabayan. International English language schools use English as the foundational language. Chinese schools add two language subjects such as Minnan Chinese and Mandarin Chinese and may use English or Chinese as the foundational language. 
the Constitution mandates that Spanish and Arabic shall be promoted on a voluntary and optional basis. Following on this, a few private schools mainly catering to the elite include Spanish in their curriculum. Arabic is taught in Islamic schools. Until 2004, primary students traditionally wrote the National Elementary Achievement Test administered by the Department of Education, Culture and Sports. It was intended as a measure of a school's competence, and not as a predictor of student aptitude or success in secondary school. Hence, the scores obtained by students in the NEET were not used as a basis for their admission into secondary school. During 2004, when DECS was officially converted into the Department of Education, and also, as a result of some reorganization, the NEET was changed to National Achievement Test by the Department of Education. Both the public and private elementary schools take this exam to measure a school's competency. As of 2006, only private schools have entrance examinations for secondary schools. DEP Ed expects over 13.1 million elementary students to be enrolled in public elementary schools for school year 2009 Euro 2010. Though elementary schooling is compulsory, as of 2010 it was reported that 27.82% of Filipino elementary aged children either never attend or never complete elementary schooling, usually due to the absence of any school in their area, education being offered in a language that is foreign to them, or financial distress. In July 2009 DEP Ed moved to overcome the foreign language issue by ordering all elementary schools to move towards initial mother tongue based instruction. The order allows two alternative three-year bridging plans. Depending on the bridging plan adopted, the Filipino and English languages are to be phased in as the language of instruction for other subjects beginning in the third and fourth grades. Secondary Education Secondary school in the Philippines, more commonly known as high school, consists of four levels largely based on the U.S. school system as it existed until the advent of the comprehensive high schools in the U.S. in the middle of 20th century. The Philippine high school system has not significantly evolved from where it was when the Philippines achieved independence from the United States in 1946. It still consists of only four levels with each level partially compartmentalized, focusing on a particular theme or content. The Department of Education specifies a compulsory curriculum for all high schooling, public and private. The first year of high school has five core subjects, Algebra I, Integrated Science, English I, Filipino I, and Philippine History I. The second year curriculum has Algebra II, Biology, English II, Filipino II, and Asian History. The third year has Geometry, Trigonometry, Chemistry, Filipino III, and World History and Geography. The final fourth year curriculum has Calculus, Advanced Algebra, Physics, Filipino IV, Literature, and Economics. Minor subjects may include health, music, arts, technology and home economics, and physical education. In selective schools, various languages may be offered as electives, as well as other subjects such as computer programming and literary writing. Chinese schools have language and cultural electives. Preparatory schools usually add some business and accountancy courses, while science high schools have biology, chemistry, and physics at every level. Secondary students used to sit for the National Secondary Achievement Test, which was based on the American SAT, and was administered by DEP Ed. Like its primary school counterpart, NSAT was phased out after major reorganizations in the Education Department. Its successors, the National Career Assessment Examination and National Achievement Test are administered to third and fourth year students respectively. Neither the NSAT nor NAT have been used as a basis for being offered admission to higher education institutions, partly because pupils sit them at almost the end of their secondary education. Instead, higher education institutions, both public and private, administer their own college entrance examinations. Vocational colleges usually do not have entrance examinations, simply accepting the Form 138 Record of Studies from High School and enrollment payment. Technical and vocational education, formal technical and vocational education starts at secondary education, with a two-year curriculum, 
which grants access to vocational tertiary education. Non-formal technical and vocational education is assumed by institutions usually accredited and approved by TESDA, center-based programs, community-based programs and enterprise-based training, or the alternative learning system. The institutions may be government-operated, often by provincial government, or private. They may offer programs ranging in duration from a couple of weeks to two-year diploma courses. Programs can be technology courses like automotive technology, computer technology, and electronic technology. Service courses such as caregiver, nursing aid, hotel and restaurant management. And trades courses such as electrician, plumber, welder, automotive mechanic, diesel mechanic, heavy vehicle operator and practical nursing. Upon graduating from most of these courses, Students may take an examination from TESDA to obtain the relevant certificate or diploma. Tertiary Education Tertiary education in the Philippines is increasingly less cosmopolitan. From a height of 5,284 foreign of students in 1995 a year 1996 the number steadily declined to 2,323 in 2000 a year 2001, the last year CHED published numbers on its website. Other schools, there are other types of schools such as private schools, preparatory schools, international schools, laboratory high schools, and science high schools. Several foreign ethnic groups, including Chinese, British, Americans, Koreans, and Japanese operate their own schools. Chinese schools Chinese schools add two additional subjects to the core curriculum, Chinese communication arts and literature. Some also add Chinese history, philosophy and culture, and Chinese mathematics. Still, other Chinese schools called cultural schools, offer Confucian classics and Chinese art as part of their curriculum. Religion also plays an important part in the curriculum. American evangelists founded some Chinese schools. Some Chinese schools have Catholic roots. Islamic schools, in 2004. The Department of Education adopted Do 51 putting in place the teaching of Arabic language and Islamic values for Muslim children in the public schools. The same order authorized the implementation of the standard Madrasa curriculum in the private madaris. While there has been recognized Islamic schools, that is Ibn Siena Integrated School, Sarangbangan LC, and Southwestern Mindanao Islamic Institute, their Islamic studies curriculum varies. With the DEP ed authorized SMC, the subject offering is uniform across these private madaris. Since 2005, the AUSAID funded DEP ed project Basic Education Assistance for Mindanao has assisted a group of private madaris seeking government permit to operate and implement the SMC. To date, there are 30 of these private madaris scattered throughout regions 11, 12, and the ARMM. The SMC is a combination of the RBEC subjects and the teaching of Arabic and Islamic studies subjects. For school year 2010 to Euro 2011, there are 47 madaris in the ARMM alone. See also, main links, distance e-learning in the Philippines, higher education in the Philippines, list of universities and colleges in the Philippines, list of Catholic universities and colleges in the Philippines, list of the oldest schools in the Philippines. Categories, Category, Filipino Educators, Category, Schools of Medicine in the Philippines, Category, Graduate Schools in the Philippines, Category, Law Schools in the Philippines, Category, Liberal Arts Colleges in the Philippines, Category, Business Schools in the Philippines, Category, Private Universities and Colleges in the Philippines, Category, Military Education and Training in the Philippines, References External links Department of Education, World Data on Education, UNESCO IBE, 2011, Overview of the Education System, TVET in the Philippines, UNESCO UNIVOC, 2014, Overview of the Technical and Vocational Education System, Ling in technical or vocational schools, or in higher education institutions like universities. Although the 1987 Constitution states that elementary education is compulsory, it was never put into force. Since 2011, the country started its transition from its old 10-year basic educational system to the K-12 educational system.
as mandated by DEP ed. This time, the new 12-year system is now compulsory, along with the adoption of new curricula for all schools. The transition shall last until the SY. 2017-2018, where the first graduates under the new educational system will be brought forth. All public schools in the Philippines must start classes from a date mandated by the Department of Education, and must end after each school completes the mandated 200-day school calendar of DEP ed. Private schools are not obliged with version of Doctrina Cristiana. A Spanish and Tagalog version, in both Latin script and the locally used Bebain script, was printed in 1593. In 1610, Thomas Pinpin, a Filipino printer, writer and publisher, who is sometimes referred as the Patriarch of Filipino Printing, wrote his famous Librong Pergaralan Nang Manga Tagalog Nang Wakorn Castilla, which was meant to help Filipinos learn the Spanish language. The prologue read, in 1640, the Universidad de San Felipe de Austria was established in Manila. It was the first public university in the Philippines. On April 28, 1611, the University of Santo Tomas was founded in Manila as the Colegio de Nuestra C plus or minus Ora del Santísimo Rosario. By the end of the 16th century, several religious orders education in the Philippines is managed and regulated by the Department of Education or DEP ed as it is commonly referred to in the country. The department controls the Philippine education system, especially the curriculum used in schools, and usage of funds used for further improvements, which includes the continual building of schools and its facilities, and the recruitment of teachers and other staff, among others. Prior to the mid-20th century, the country's education system was patterned on those of its earlier colonial powers, those of both Spain and the United States. However, after the Philippine independence in 1946, its educational system changed radically. The former basic educational system of the Philippines was composed of six years of elementary education starting at the age of six, and four years of high school education starting at the age of twelve. Afterwards, one can continue his or her education by enrolling. The church and the school both work together. All Christian villages had schools for students to attend. Spanish missionaries established schools immediately after reaching the islands. The Augustinians opened a school in Cebu in 1565. The Franciscans, in 1577, immediately took to the task of teaching improving literacy, aside from the teaching of new industrial and agricultural techniques. The Jesuits followed in 1581, also by the Dominicans in 1587, and they started a school in their first mission at Batalan. In 1590, the Universidad de San Ignacio was founded in Manila by the Jesuits, and following the suppression of the Jesuits was incorporated into the University of Santo Tomas, College of Medicine and Pharmacy. The first book printed in the Philippines dates back to 1590. It is a Chinese lang to abide by the date declared by DEP ed, but must open classes no later than the last week of August. History, Pre-Colonial Period During the pre-colonial period, education was still decentralized. Children were provided with more vocational training but fewer academics. Philippine schools were headed by parents or by their tribal tutors. They employed a unique writing system known as Bebein. Spanish period. When the Spanish first arrived in Manila, they were surprised to find a population with a literacy rate higher than that of Madrid. During the early Spanish period, most education was conducted by religious orders. The friars, recognizing the value of the literate indigenous population, built printing presses to produce material in Bebein. Missionaries studied the local languages and the Bebein to communicate better with the local populations and teach Christianity.